You are listening to What It's Like with Luz, a podcast highlighting ordinary people doing extraordinary things. I'm your host, Lucy Norris, and on today's episode, I'm chatting to fashion designer and founder of Aoife Ireland. Noticing her love for fashion from a young age, this week's guest wasted no time in pursuing her dream and enrolled in a university course to study fashion design the minute she left secondary school. Finding herself interning in New York for the one and only Mark Jacob, it was evident the up-and-coming designer had a bright future ahead and continued to take things further by moving to Paris following graduation to fully immerse herself in the industry. Returning home to Ireland from the French capital, she began gifting pieces of her collection to Instagram influencers and from there, things started to really take off. Focusing on using only sustainable Irish materials, her designs landed her on the runway of Paris Fashion Week last year, showcasing her autumn winter collection. Sharing insights into the new role of social media in the growth of the fashion industry, what it's really like working as a designer in Ireland, and how she burst onto the scene, here's what it's like to be Aoife McNamara. Before we get stuck into the episode, I just wanted to say that if there is a drop in sound quality throughout, I'm very sorry, but in respect of social distancing during COVID-19, I've had to record episodes remotely. In this challenging time, we're all trying our best, so I really hope everyone is staying safe and that you enjoy the episode. Welcome Aoife, thanks so much for coming on and chatting with me today. I think it'd be really good to start at the very beginning and chat a little bit about where your interest in fashion came from. Yeah, sure. So... I suppose my interest in fashion, like I would have always had like my sisters, I have two older sisters and they're very like into fashion. They love um, styles and always getting like new different pieces. So I suppose it would have started like from looking at my older sister's style. And then I think like the first time I knew like I wanted to be in like the design side of it was I saw I was always good at um, art during school. But then when I went to see the graduate showcase in LSAD in fourth year, that's sort of when I knew like that the fashion industry side of it was for me. So I've always had like an interest in art and fashion. So the, then when that happened in fourth year, the two just sort of merged together. Um, and yeah, that's that was how I got inspired to be in the design side of it. And so you went on then to study a BA in fashion design, is that right? Yes, I studied a four-year um, BA honours degree in fashion design in LSAD. How was that experience for you? Good, I loved LSAD. It's actually such an amazing college. Um, I graduated in 2018 and yeah, no, the whole experience is amazing. The teachers are so good um, and yeah, it's a tough course. Like, I'm not going to lie, it's a really hard course, um, but if you really love it, like, it's, you know, it's, it makes it a lot easier um but yeah the experience there was amazing in third year we got to go away on work experience um where I went to New York so yeah we got great opportunities with the college and I read that you did your work experience with Mark Jacobs in New York that's insane yeah. how was that yeah no that was amazing um yeah no it was crazy like I, I was in third year um at the time and I spent five months over in New York as a design intern and um yeah the whole experience obviously um stood to me so much even in my career now um I learned so much over there and uh yeah it was it was crazy to even think about it now it was a crazy moment I remember moving there by myself I literally didn't know anyone um but yeah like the whole experience over there was amazing sometimes I think the best things come from the most kind of random experiences where you do push yourself so much out of your comfort zone and just have to take everything as it comes because you've no other choice. So no, I read that and I thought that was really cool. Um, And then, so aside from New York, I'm not sure what the kind of timeline is, but you also did some work experience in um, Paris as well. Yeah. What was that like? Was that during your degree or was that after you finished? No, so Paris was, I, I just graduated, then I moved to Paris. I graduated in um, May. We finished college in, I think, May. I actually, geez, I can't even remember now. Whenever we finished college, is <laughs> May? May, June. Um, and then I moved straight to Paris that summer. So I was there for um, August. And I did, I went over there for Paris Fashion Week. I had a job there for three weeks to start. Um, and then I didn't have any job after that. I just had an Airbnb booked. Um, I didn't know anyone. I barely had French. 
Um, but it was that was probably even more like of a a really important moment in my career, like a pivoting point, more so even than New York, because I suppose I was really thrown in the deep end. I sort of had to go around with my CV um, in my pocket and knocking on the fashion house's doors. Um, so yeah, like that was the most amazing experience. Like, I don't think you can pay for experiences like that. Um, so yeah, Paris was great. And I, I, Paris still has my heart. I'm obsessed with the city. And even my spring summer collection was inspired by Parisian sunsets and Parisian architecture. So, um, I'm still very inspired by Paris and I definitely want to go back there. Um, if it's for my photo shoots or whatever, um, I'll definitely be back there soon. Um, so yeah, that experience was crazy. Yeah, it sounds so amazing. I've only been to Paris once, but it's, I just don't think you can fault it. It's so pretty. Everywhere is so Instagrammable and stuff like that. So I know. it's just such an authentic city. Like you can't, you can't beat Paris. I love it. What made you decide to come back home? So I got offered a job. It was actually so, it's funny looking back on things. So randomly I got offered a job at Christmas, I had an interview for a job at Christmas time. They contacted me to redesign uniforms for a corporate wear company. Um, and I sort of, like at the time I was like, oh yeah, I'll, I doubt I'll get it. You know, like I was just out of college. Um, and then I actually got the job in January. So it was a big job. So I, I moved home for the job. And then I was planning on going back again after, but then I started to um, sell my clothes online. So I've always sort of like, showed my clothes online since before Paris but I never sold anything um like I I gave a few dresses like to Suzanne um and to influencers but like I still wouldn't even even sell those pieces so it was really only when I came back there I remember it was Sue no it was Louise Cooney's um she went over to London Fashion Week and I remember I met her the sage blouse and um since then that's when I started selling from that point on and so Eva Ireland is your brand, which I read you kind of, did it start as your third year project or how did, how did you kind of yeah. grow out on your own like that? Well, yeah, so I suppose it's, that's where it grew because I, I started my um, final year collection and that was all inspired by um, sustainable Irish materials. Um, and I really met my contacts and everything with doing my Irish collection. I was actually sponsored by McNutt of Donegal. They sponsored all my Irish wool. And I went all around Ireland actually shooting um, images, which was so much fun. But yeah, it sort of all started when I was in college and I didn't even know it. Um, really by like, um, with like, there's a clear relationship between what I'm doing now and what I did for my final year collection. Um, and a lot of my designs that I've done in that collection do come back. Like my puppy sleeve was one of my statement pieces for my graduate collection. So it was like, it was growing organically throughout college. And I, I, I just didn't know. <laughs> I think that's also as well, how the best things start when you're not really trying, yeah, obviously you're trying for the purposes of college, but you weren't trying in so much to grow it into a bigger business. So then I think success comes more that way because you're not so focused on numbers and sales and stuff like that you touched briefly on the fact that you started um giving pieces of your clothes to i, I don't know if they're only like instagram celebrities but in the celebrity world that kind of way how did that come about did you just reach out to them and send them a sample or did you have people coming to you yeah so i was i was quite lucky um i before I even before people knew me as like a fashion designer I was I was sort of blogging away I wasn't I, I didn't really blog but I, I did have an online presence so I would have been going to the events and meeting um like say Louise Cooney um and then I also would have worked with Suzanne Jackson before that so I would have sort of had contacts throughout the industry um before they knew I was a fashion designer I would have known them um so I was quite lucky in that way um, when they saw my pieces, I was like, oh, I'd love to send you a piece. And then they would um, they would wear it for me, which was great. Um, they're very supportive to me and they still are. Um, so I suppose, yeah, I was quite lucky. I had a lot of contacts before I started a brand. So what role do you think Instagram as a selling tool and then also as a marketing tool has played in the growth of your business? Huge. Oh, my God. I still, majority of my sales come from Instagram, which is crazy. Um, yeah, I, I don't know if I would have as a successful brand like 
or I suppose I'm still only starting, but I wouldn't be as known um, in Ireland if it wasn't for Instagram. I don't know how, I don't know if I would have even, have even launched a business to be honest, because it all started with people asking me for clothes online. And that's how I got the confidence to start my brand. Um, so yeah, I don't know if I would have a business if it wasn't for Instagram. Your business has grown so quickly from 2018 to now. I think it's, it's insane. I know you put in a lot of hard work behind the scenes, but it seems like you just walked straight out of college into a successful career. Mm -hmm. I think it's so funny when people say that because I, yeah, it, it, that's what it looks like, but I have worked so hard since I was in first year in college. So it's not as if, you know, I just walked out and stepped into um, a brand. Like it is a lot of hard work and I do want to just get that across because you do have to work very hard to get to launching a brand. Um, and I'm still working on it, but yeah, it takes a lot of hard work, a lot of interning for free, a lot of <laughs> annoying people um, and asking questions. But yeah, no, it is, it definitely is worth all the hard work. So going back to kind of the nitty gritty details of building a brand from scratch, how did you take your college project and make it into a viable business from the side of kind of funding and then obviously there would have been distribution for your your clothes and and I don't know if you have a factory or sourcing material all of that kind of stuff how did you find that process very hard <laughs> I'm still I still haven't found I did, haven't found any of the um I find fabric manufacturers but they're not the ones I'm going to be working with long term at all um, of course, I have my Irish wool, which I'll stick with 100%. I love working with um, John Hanley, but I am I want to source more sustainable materials, and it's very hard to do that in Ireland. Um, of course, we have our Irish wool, which is amazing, but other um, materials I definitely um, am working on and still working on will hopefully um, have them for my new collection. But yeah, it's really hard. You know, you just really have to try and trial and error when it comes to manufacturers um, because my clothes, I, I want them to be the highest quality. And um, even though there is a really high standard to my finish, I want it to be higher. So I'm still learning and growing every single day. Um, and I haven't um, even found out, you know, like I'm still finding that right manufacturer and um, sourcing different materials and everything like that so yeah I'm I'm growing every day and learning with it yeah I can only imagine how much of a difficult process it is because mm -hmm. to take yeah. something from a piece of paper into something you wear on the street must it must be so rewarding but also the most stressful thing I can imagine um, and so did you ever go through any kind of investment rounds or anything like that or is that not something you want to do for your business investment so i i work a lot with the limerick leo so i um have secured a priming grant with them so they sort of um would help you out with your studio and different bits like that but i think when it comes to like investors not right now um maybe down the line but um yeah it's i i think i just want to keep it 100 percent me right now um so yeah i i think like the leo are a great support to me um, I also did like their start up your own business course, which is a great course for anyone who wants to start up their own business. Um, so yeah, they helped me out loads through like down the line they have loads of support systems um, in place for people starting their own business. And obviously then sustainability is a massive part of your brand identity and how you make your clothes. How did you decide to go down that route rather than just potentially the quicker, easier kind of fast fashion model, such as like PLT, that kind of vibe. Why did you make that decision to go the sustainable route for your brand? Yeah, I think for me, it's just genuinely what I care about. And especially like growing up in Ireland with like our beautiful landscape, our beautiful planet. Like I honestly just like, I love Ireland and I want to embrace what we have in Ireland. And I think um, I don't want my clothes to be going to landfills. I want it to be like a circular. I want it to be, uh, a, if you get a top for me, I want it to be a, an item that you adore and you'd hand down to your grandchildren. Um, so like, I want it to be like pieces that you keep in a circular chain and that you really truly love. And sustainability is just so important to me as a brand. Um, 
just to pick the right materials and that it's not going to, going to go into a landfill or fall apart, that it's made with care and um, that it'll last for a lifetime. And where do you get your inspiration from? Because I can imagine sometimes, you know, being in the creative industry as well, sometimes you do hit those roadblocks where you just have a bit of, you know, dry inspiration. You don't really know where you're going with things. Do you ever experience that or, or are you always just inspired by, by things? Yeah, do you know what? It always, my inspiration always changes. Like it could, like one season, it could be just even from a quote, but the next season it could be from like Paris, as I was saying, and sunsets. So I think I'm always just very open with what I'm inspired with. I'm not like, oh, I get inspired by this all the time. Do you know, I'm I'm very open, like if it's traveling, if it's from home, it's if it's from my family, um, I'm always just inspired by different things. And it is hard because, you know, you do have to, you know, as a creative, we do have to dig deep and it is everything we do is very personal. Um, but yeah, it always changes and I'm always very just free and open with it um, as much as I can be. But yeah, yeah, I, I do understand how like you can get stuck, but thank God I haven't, I haven't gotten there yet. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Um, so where are you at now with your kind of current designs? Um, where am I not now? So I'm currently working on, um, well, my autumn winter um, will be launching um, soon enough. We're sort of just waiting for everything to go back to normal so we can do the photo shoot. So hopefully um, that won't be much longer um, with the photo shoot. And yeah, that's, um, then I'm working, I'm currently working on just finishing off that. And then I'm, I'm currently working on my spring summer as well. Um, spring summer 2021 um, so yeah it's all go um, at the moment but it's exciting hopefully now when things get back to normal it'll be full steam ahead with everything yeah no that sounds really exciting and do you have any people helping you at all with anything have you taken anyone on or is it still just fully yourself yeah so I, I have a manufacturing company in Dublin who make all my garments and I have I have gotten four interns which is very exciting and that's actually also a great thing about quarantine I had time to grow a team around me which I've been wanting to do for so long but I suppose you know you've been so busy um I've been so busy so it's something I sort of left on the back burner so yeah I've I have four interns with me currently um so yeah it's hopefully it'll my team will keep growing around me and I'll keep working with amazing people who also influence me um with my inspiration so yeah it's it's good at the moment and obviously you're so young as well and this is kind of I guess the boom of your business has happened pretty quickly how have you found transitioning from a college student trying to make it in the fashion industry to being head of your brand like you said having to to manage for interns and things like that do you ever struggle with that management role or has it just been very seamless transition yeah, I think I'm I'm very I'm a very relaxed person to be honest. I I don't I wouldn't really get stressed. I don't like like I plan but I'm not very you know strict when it comes to um different things. I'm strict at my deadlines, but I am quite a relaxed person to work with. Um so I think that definitely helps when it comes to managing people. Um I'm a people's person as well. I lo love working with people. Um so I wouldn't say it's seamless. Of course, I'm learning every day. But I suppose what has also helped me is my, my dad has his own business. My sister has her own business. So I suppose I have been inspired a lot by them and how they work with their um, employees. So yeah, I, I suppose I, yeah, I, I haven't really found it that tough so far anyway. I'm enjoying it. And if you had to pick one career high and one career low at this point, what would they be? Ooh. I think my career high would probably have been showing in Paris Fashion Week, um, my autumn winter collection, and my career low probably be quitting my first job in Paris. But oh. in the in the bigger picture of it, I learned so much from it, so it was brilliant. But yeah, definitely, I've never quit a job before, so that would have been nice. And you just touched there that you showed in Paris Fashion Week. Can you tell me a bit more about that? That must have been crazy exciting. Yeah, so I got asked to go over to show my autumn winter collection in Paris Fashion Week. Um, and it was 
what month was it in? It was February, I think two months ago now. Um, it was February, yeah, the end of February. Um, but yeah, it was crazy. It was all very, um, they, they asked me, it was like a month or two months before. So I didn't, I barely even had my collection ready. Um, but yeah, no, it was, the whole experience was crazy. And the fact that it was Paris, I, I had to say, yeah, I was like, okay, there's no ifs and buts about it. I have to go to Paris. <laughs> um, it was a, it was amazing experience. Um, and definitely one I'll never forget. Yeah, I can imagine the day you got that email or phone call or however you got it being asked to go to Paris Fashion Week. That's a huge deal. Yeah, no, it was it was crazy. And so then um, if you had to pick the best thing and the worst thing about working in the fashion industry in general, what would they be? The best, um, the amazing Irish heritage we have here in Ireland, um, like our Irish woolen mills and the, also the amazing um, support that you get from working, being a creative in Ireland. Um, they would definitely be the goods and um, the bad. Is it for like the fashion industry? Like, Yeah, like have you found anything kind of, because I know there's a lot of preconceptions about the fashion industry, it being really bitchy or, you know, people oh, yeah. just kind of, it's obviously cutthroat, but potentially not in as negative a way as what people think. Mm -hmm. I think that's that I think yeah of course you're going to go into places um like I definitely experienced that in one of the places the place that I quit <laughs> in <laughs> Paris um but I think it's also down to you as a person and how you want to react to that environment like you can react to it negatively and then um you probably draw more negative experiences on you or you can re react to it in a positive manner and um turn it into a positive situation so you're always going to get negative experiences and negative people whatever industry you're in I suppose it's all about your reaction and um, so I'm lucky I haven't really experienced any bad sides to it yet um and I'm I'm sorry I can't really pinpoint any because I know yeah. it's a question but um that's probably a good thing though that you can't pinpoint anything because yeah I mean I think it's sort of like bad experience or like bad I think it's more so like how the person reacts to a situation is what makes it that. So I think I am quite a positive person, so I wouldn't really react to the situation in that way. And kind of aside from that, do you remember a time when you ever encountered a challenge that potentially made you think maybe going out on my own isn't such a good idea? I should just go work for someone else or, or did that never cross your mind? Not yet. <laughs> good <laughs> I'm still only starting ask me this next year and I'll be like okay how long do you have <laughs> um but yeah I think sometimes I forget like I I actually started my business this time last year and I only launched it properly on my website in October so this is still all very new I'm still like I'm still starting do you know what I mean like it's all still very new um so yeah I'm I, I haven't hit those experiences yet but I'm I'm sure I definitely will um but yeah I'm I'm just enjoying the whole journey of it so far and um yeah I I haven't hit them yet <laughs> and what do you envision as the future for yourself as as a designer and then also for Aoife Ireland as a brand so I think for me as a designer I like this year was mainly like I really want to grow my knowledge in sustainable design and really want to understand how we can help make a difference as designers um, and for a brand I like what I want Eve Ireland to be is to become a community not just a fashion label where people are educated where we have events um, so it's more so a big community rather than just a fashion label um, that people see my brand as going forward so yeah, there are two goals of mine that um, I really want to work on this year. So hopefully we'll start. Yeah, that's a really nice goal to have. I think it's so nice to have created, I, I feel like you're doing it already, but creating more of a personal identity around the brand rather than it just being, you know, clothes on a hanger that people don't really think about when they pick them up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 100%. And obviously you've already experienced 
success in your career, even though you're only starting out. Do you have a personal definition of what that word means to you? It's a good question. I think for me, success is being happy and confident in myself and what I'm creating, not what other people think, not what other people think of my brand, but what I myself what goals I hit and what I think of my brand. Um, so yeah, I think that's a big thing for me, like really being happy with the clothes that I make and um, knowing that I'm making the right decision um, is the most important thing to me. And then my last question for you, and I'll let you get on with your evening. Um, if I put your 10 year old self in front of you today, having been through everything you've been through, all of the experiences you've had, what's the biggest piece of advice you would give your 10 year old self moving forward in life? Have more confidence in, your, confidence in yourself. I think even throughout our college, um, especially with my creative side, I definitely never saw myself as a, as a really, like I was never top of my class. I was average, even sometimes below average. Um, so I suppose I never believed in my own ability um, a lot of the time throughout college. And um, I think that's one thing I would just tell myself is to um, believe in yourself and have more confidence and um, don't take on too much what other people, um, other people think of you because ultimately it's your life and you only get one shot of it. So you just have to go for it. You would never know that you potentially weren't that confident in yourself though having seen everything that you've done it's it's amazing so congratulations thanks so much for chatting with me today i really appreciate it Aww, thank you lucy and best of luck with all your podcasts thank you so much for listening and as always please rate share and leave a comment if you like what you hear and don't forget to follow at what it's like pod on instagram and facebook to shop Eva ireland visit the links provided in the show notes I'll be back on Thursday with more inspiring stories, but for now, this has been What It's Like with Luce.